Hi. I just wanted to post a brief update as of October 14th because we're, we're at a critical point here in the markets. I think people who've been following us and read our book know that we've been expecting a bear market rally into late summer, early fall. We were originally expecting this would last at latest mid-September and we first got a little top at September 23rd, but now we're retesting those areas and, and the markets look like they well could continue to go up. Now this is pretty unprecedented because we've studied other major bear markets uh, like in the early 1930s and, and uh, in the late 1930s and of course the very strong uh, crash we saw 2000-2002 and, and bear market rallies are usually sharp like this and usually don't give much way. That's, that's a classic sign but they rarely last more than six months or seven months at the most. So we're at seven months now. So this, this market should be running out of steam, but then we look at our, a lot of our short-term indicators that we cover in our newsletter about whether the market's overbought or oversold or you know, ready to correct or, or, or go up again. And, and it's saying, you know, we, we got overbought here on the way up a number of times, but right now there, there's nothing screaming that the market should top. So, so we've now basically come up in our recent uh, newsletter and updates to, hey, there's, there's two scenarios here. We could be topping here. Uh, in mid-October. Uh, our short-term cycle suggests it's more likely the market would correct into November, bounce back up in December, and then correct again in January. Those are just cycles that help us refine, and nothing says that has to be. But that would be the suggestion. So the, the real question is, in, in scenario one, if we get a more extreme correction here into early to mid-November, 2,000 points or more, let's say down to Dow 8,000 or something like that or lower, that would say, yes, we put in a top in this bear market rally and this is the first wave down and it could go lower than that. Uh, that's been our preferred scenario thus far. The second scenario would say, no, let's say we just take mild correction here and go sideways for a while or, um, and the markets could continue to go up. Our, our next kind of up cycle is, is into late December, early January, and that's probably likely to be as late as this market goes, we, 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 we would uh, assume. Uh, if the market kept going up at the same rate it's been going up, about 500 points a month, it would be up above 11,000 on the Dow by then. In fact, uh, in our newsletter months ago, we showed our most bullish scenario, and it was, it's called a reverse head and shoulders. Kind of you put in a little shoulder here, come up, put in a deeper head bottom, then a second shoulder, and then you come up. That projects an S&P 500 of 1240 versus a 1,080 high here recently, and a Dow, similarly, something like 11,300 or so. So that's scenario two, and, and we're going to be looking in the next couple weeks in our newsletter and, 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 and our analysis about, hey, is, is this, are we topping here or are we likely to head higher? Because people may want to get back in the market for a while if that's the case. And you sure, certainly wouldn't want to be short the market. We've been telling people, look, if, if we see the Dow go above a little more than 10,000, say 10,050, uh, you don't want to be short here. There's, there's too much risk to the upside near term. So that's, that's principle one. We're at a key turning point. We'll see what happens here and continue to monitor this. Uh, the second principle in our newsletter we've been calling the ticking time bomb. Even though we're recovering because of the stimulus and, our, and the leading indicators are suggesting we're going to continue to recover into early next year uh, for now, uh, we keep seeing loan defaults and foreclosures and housing. And, and one of the things we noticed is half the foreclosure or half the houses that have technically defaulted haven't even moved into foreclosure yet. So there's a backlog and a lag on that. Unemployment stays high well into recovery and unemployment and continued layoffs continues to trigger defaults. But the most important thing uh, that we're going to include in our November newsletter is a report, uh, a report from Deutsche Bank, which regardless of the economy, they're not projecting a bad economy like we are. They're saying that this foreclosure and default uh, process is going to continue and then by the first quarter of 2011, 48% of mortgages, that's 25 million mortgages, will have negative equity. In other words, the mortgage will be higher than the value of the house. And over half of those will be severe negative equity where it's more than 25% higher the mortgage than the value of the house. Those are clear defaults and foreclosures and remember this happens on a lag so so you know that's the principle here 
ticking time bomb. What is, what is most unusual about this correction is the depth of it, the fact that it's coming after the greatest housing and credit bubble in history. And once you get the leveraging of those types of bubbles start, it's hard to stop it. In other words, we're saying this deleveraging is continuing even though the stimulus is working enough to get the economy recovering to some degree. But we all know, and I think it's common sense, there's no way the economy is going back to where it was in 2007 in lending and spending. Baby boomers have peaked long term. They've been badly hurt by the decline in, in their assets and net worth. Now, now it's stocks, commodities, real estate, and everything hitting them at once. They never had enough savings in the first place. And we all know the banks were mortally wounded. If it hadn't been for the Treasury and Fed rescue, they would have melted down. What we're saying, to summarize, is you can't stop this. We have $17 trillion alone in, in, in just financial sector debt. This has never happened in history. It's always been a minor amount. Yes, it's one thing to loan against businesses and real estate. This is just financial sector debt to leverage investments within the financial sector. And, and, and so this bubble is going to continue to deleverage and it's going to continue to back up the banks. And our best estimate, frankly, right now, and when we look at when loans will reset and a lot of other factors and cycles, is that the, the worst of this crisis will start to hit again around the summer of 2010. And the worst of the crisis following that, as we've always said in the book, would probably be early to mid-2011. That's when we're likely to see the highest unemployment, the worst foreclosures, and, and, and that sort of things in business failures. So again, the markets are going to be ahead of that. I, I mean, so if, if we're going to see this crisis in the summer on. The markets should start to pick this up somewhere between here, October, and maybe December, early January at the latest. So we're looking for a top here. Uh, our analysis is clear. We are going to see the economy worsen again. In other words, we are recovering, but it is not sustainable because of this ticking time bomb in foreclosures and because of the deleveraging process. So we're just looking for when it tops, and, and we're trying to keep people abreast of this since it's such an ter important turning point. So, you know, perhaps in the, in, you know, we get into November and see if we get a minor correction here or, or no correction at all or, or major correction. Uh, you know, then, then we can be a little more clear about whether we've seen a top here or not or whether it's going to occur later this year. But, but one way or the other, we are clear, next year is not going to be the year of recovery that most economists are promising. Thanks for listening.